I need to get out of here now. Louise, what are you doing? Anything okay in there? Yeah, we're all good. Anything we can get you? No, 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 we'll just be a minute. It's October and Halloween season is fully upon us. So you know what that means, scary movie remakes. But what makes a remake worth watching? Is it simply about nostalgia? Or is it the potential to improve upon an already solid foundation? These were questions many asked when the 2024 remake of Speak No Evil was announced, with much skepticism surrounding its necessity. After all, the original Danish film came out just two years ago in 2022. What could this remake possibly offer? Turns out, quite a bit. Against all odds, this film not only justifies its existence, but also stands tall in its own right. Is Speak No Evil going to be one of the most unexpectedly brilliant films of the year? How about its performance as a narrative? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we dive in, take a moment to like and subscribe. If just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet hit that button, it would make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part is, subscribing is completely free. The plot of Speak No Evil follows two families who, after meeting briefly on vacation, decide to reconnect by spending a weekend together at the home of one family in a secluded countryside location. What starts as a seemingly pleasant weekend trip soon spirals into a nerve-wracking experience as small social discomforts morph into something far more sinister. The hosts, Patty, played by James McAvoy, and Chiara, played by Ashling Franciosi, are initially friendly, though slightly odd. But as time passes, it becomes clear that their behavior is not just eccentric, it's dangerous. The film brings together again Scoot McNary and Mackenzie Davis from one of my pandemic binges, the excellent series Halt and Catch Fire. Without spoiling too much, the tension between the two families builds to a point of excruciating discomfort. McAvoy's character, Patty, dominates the screen with an energy that's both magnetic and terrifying. The real turning point comes in the film's final act, where it diverges significantly from the original 2022 version. This remake takes a hard left turn and explores a new psychological dimension, adding layers of ambiguity and unpredictability to the story. Let's face it, no one expected this film to be any good, especially with that trailer making the rounds for what felt like an eternity. Twitter buzzed with low expectations, many questioning the point of remaking a film that was barely two years old and already in English. As one Twitter comment stated, Shockingly good for a movie a lot thought was destined to be awful. A solid 7.5. Nothing groundbreaking, but really well made. And I have to agree with that. The first hour of the movie admittedly treads familiar ground, almost to a fault. If you've seen the original, you'll feel a strong sense of deja vu. But then as another Twitter user aptly described, it takes a hard turn in the third act and does its own thing, and that's where it hooks you. The final third act of the film is what sets this remake apart, breathing new life into the story. It's like watching a high wire act. You're on edge, knowing something is about to go terribly wrong, but you just can't look away. And we gotta talk about James McAvoy. If the original Speak No Evil was eerie, this one is unsettling to the core, and McAvoy is the reason why. Patty is a character with a carefully controlled chaos bubbling just under the surface, and McAvoy plays this beautifully. One moment he's charismatic and disarmingly charming, and the next he's cold and calculating, his eyes giving away just enough to make you squirm in your seat. In the now infamous BJ at the restaurant house scene, McAvoy's unsettling performance elevates what could have been a merely awkward moment into a visceral experience for both the characters and the audience. It seems to me that James McAvoy played this role a little too well. You'll feel that tension. Every awkward pause, every disingenuous smile, every flicker of madness. His portrayal of Patty is so nuanced, you can't quite pin him down. Is he just eccentric, or is he something far more menacing? That ambiguity is McAvoy's greatest strength here, leaving the audience just as confused as his house guests. 
His ability to switch between charming host and terrifying captor keeps you on the edge of your seat, wondering what fresh hell he'll unleash next. Interestingly, this remake wasn't afraid to inject some dark humor into the mix, something the original film largely avoided. The tension is often broken by moments that feel almost absurd, yet somehow fitting within the context of the film's growing unease. McAvoy's character throws in sly remarks and does things so casually sinister that it feels like you're watching an episode of The Office, if The Office were a horror film. The humor here works precisely because it doesn't detract from the overall tension. Instead, it magnifies the discomfort, making you question whether you should be laughing or running for the hills. And just when you think you've caught your breath, the film pulls you right back into the psychological horror at its core. McAvoy may be the star, but let's not overlook the rest of the cast. Ashling Franciosi as Patty's wife Chiara serves as a compelling foil. Initially, she comes off as simply complicit in Patty's antics, but as the story unfolds, you begin to wonder if she's just as dangerous, if not more so. It's this ambiguity that keeps you guessing until the very end. Scoot McNary's performance as Ben, the pushover husband, is both frustrating and effective. He's your classic beta male cuck, and no wonder his wife doesn't respect him. Those weren't just texts from another dude, my guy. There were moments when you just want to yell at the screen for him to grow some balls, but in a way, his passive nature makes the climactic moments all the more impactful. Mackenzie Davis, too, comes into her own as the film progresses. Her character's arc shows why she cheated on her husband. He was weak, apathetic, and passive, all the hallmarks of a beta male. You kind of feel bad for her having to wear the pants in the relationship all the time because her husband is so weak. James Watkins, who helmed this project as both writer and director, deserves immense credit for his work here. He took the best parts of the original and added a layer of polish, nuance, and visual style that makes this remake feel fresh. Watkins clearly understands the power of restraint. In great storytelling, it's often what we don't see that is the most terrifying. And that's exactly what he delivers. Tension builds in the silence, in the pauses, in the moments where you're left to imagine what's coming next. Who would have thought that a movie seemingly unnecessary on paper would turn out to be such an engaging thrill ride? This is a pretty fun thriller and McAvoy fucking rules. It's kind of best case scenario for a movie like this. Is this a groundbreaking film? No, of course not. But it doesn't have to be. What Speak No Evil offers is an edge of your seat experience anchored by phenomenal performances from James and the other members of the cast and a story that twists just enough to keep even those familiar with the original on their toes. Whether you've seen the original or not, this is a remake worth checking out. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like the remake? And what other differences did you spot between the original and the remake? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie. Yeah.